What's up everybody, John from Old Riding Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, we're gonna answer a question that a lot of people ask us, which is, how do you keep your chicken's water from freezing in the winter? Answer is, we don't. By the way, we put videos out on Monday and Friday. We go live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Let's get to it. So we use these uh, rubber pails and they freeze overnight. And then in the morning, ah. this is my uh, high farm fashion right now. Ah. So we have tried lots and lots of different things. And I'll run through some of the options that you have. Yeah, right now, it's, I think it's 20 degrees. So it's a little chilly. But um, we have found that what works best for us in the winter is just those uh, rubber buckets. I think they're two and a half gallons, maybe three. I think they're technically feed troughs, but it's just the most efficient way of giving our chickens water, you know, because we monitor it throughout the day. It's a large enough sum of water so that it doesn't just freeze immediately. It doesn't take any electricity, gives you a little cardio in the morning. You know, the other thing is we don't have frost-free hoses, and I'm not really interested in spending money on, like, a heated hose or anything like that. And again, more electricity. So we opt with ye old bucket and pail. Hey, get, what the, hey, uh, uh. dang it. <laughs> All right, so we have accidentally released a chicken. Hey ladies, how you doing? Come on, come on. That's good. Oh, we let out two chickens. Okay. That's okay. No, not, not that way. Hold on. Ah, three chickens. All right, so I got the chickens back in. It's funny, filming and having a bucket, I just was not ready for it. So, and it's funny, because usually Catherine handles the chickens in the morning. Um, she's out doing an early morning dog walk trying to make that extra cash and um, <laughs> she every once in a while will come inside the house and say hey John uh, chick I got a little chicken out um, so when she takes care of the chickens in the morning she just every once in a while a chicken escapes um, and so now I I've taken over that role of the chicken releaser so anyway sorry cat so just let the chickens out over here. Got their nice fresh water. You know, it is an interesting little flock we have over here. We started out with mainly chickens that we bought, but now one, two, three, four, a little fight, <laughs> five. You know, probably a third of these chickens were ones that we hatched from our rooster, Norman, back there. So you can see him. God, he's such a good looking dude. Then it's, it's just cool, you know, like I, I guess I never, never would have thought in my life that I'd be a chicken guy, but um, you know, here we are. And so we do actually have, um, we launched a website a little while ago and we have for sale some hatching eggs from Norman. Um, so you can see these are all the ladies that he can turn up with. You know, we end up coming up with some cool colors. And because he's he's a frizzle, you know, it's, it's like a 50% chance of getting a frizzle. So that's pretty cool. Good job, Norman. That's our little silky boy. You see him in the back there. Jeffrey in the front. Let's hear it again, buddy. Nice. 
<laughs> that was great. <laughs> Jeffrey. Come on, Silky, one more. No? Okay, well. So we've tried all kinds of waterers. We've tried metal with metal base. We've also had two different kinds of the plastic plug-in waterers. But we just have not found something electric that really works for us. So I'm just back here to feed the alpacas. What's up, ladies? So, you know, it's just hard to find something that's gonna work that's not these rubber buckets. Because, you know, like out here, you can see we're running an extension cord and we have two things for our alpacas. We have a literal heated water bucket right here that you can see is kind of empty. And then we also have a de-icer in their trough, which is working really well. But it works, it works well enough to keep that stuff from freezing, so that's fine. Um, but you know, that same, sort of, that same sort of thing doesn't quite work as well with chickens. You know, because the extension cord generally has to be on the ground in order to get to the actual water. And, you know, chickens are rough on things, so they'll peck at it, gnaw at it, kick it. And it's just overall not good. Say hi, River. So River the barn cat actually lives in our mud room during the winter, so she's nice and warm, but we feed her out here, and she stays outside most, most of the day. So anyway, I just haven't found, like, the perfect electric water. You know, there's been a couple that are really difficult to fill, so that's not ideal. And I hate that. You know, in the morning it's cold, even with gloves on, it just makes it a little difficult. You don't want to deal with that stuff in the morning. Chickens do fine with it. It's not deep enough so that they, you know, it's not like they're gonna drown in it or anything. So, this just works the best. So I'm just gonna check in on our little chickies. <laughs> then I will show you some of what we've used in the past. So there's our chicks. So you can see the silkies right there are actually silked Easter eggers. And then I think the other ones that we have are olive eggers. And we have a couple of Norman babies and two I am Samanis made it through. So, the two heat lamps in here. Very secure. So this guy has a hat. I wonder if that's going to be a rooster. So, we'll see. Okay, so forgive their dirtiness, but this is just because they haven't used these in years. So, we have uh, basically two types of heated waters um, that I can show you that we've used before. One is this smaller base, and then this one has a bigger base and a much bigger thing at the bottom. So, with these, there are two ways to fill them up. Let me put the top on and I'll show you. So for this guy, which is the smaller base, you can, there's a little plug down here on the bottom that you can pull out and fill that way. But if you're using a hose to fill this up, then that's great, because that is like the perfect size. You just slip it right in and you're good. But you know, if you don't have heated hoses or it's too cold outside and you're using buckets, trying to use a five gallon bucket to fill this up with this tiny little hole does not work. You're going to waste a lot of water. You're going to get water all on the inside of your coop. It's going to freeze. It's going to become a mess. It's going to become dangerous for you. Not an ideal situation. Now you can take this top off and then you can fill it separately. Let me see if I can show you that. So here's how you do that. There are little clips up here that stick out. Uh, when you put this cap on, you slide it in and then you twist it. So to take it off, You have to untwist it. And it's a pain in the butt. Okay, I got it. So, so you can then fill this independently and then put the top back on it. But I hate doing that. It's a pain in the neck. Not efficient. Don't like it. So you can see there's little channels on here that have little inlets. 
So you have to line it up right there and make sure all four are lined up. Yeah. And then twist it into place so that it locks. So I don't know about you, but me trying to do that at seven o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning or whatever it is, when it's 15 degrees outside and I just wanna go inside, sucks, hate it. So, ah, there's that. Now this base is a little bit bigger and it has this little turny doodad so that you can fill it that way. But it's, it's, it doesn't have so much channels on this one, but it's got these little grippers and it works the same way. It just, again, it just sucks to try to put this on. So the other thing about these is the ends always break. So I don't even know if this one even works anymore. Um, so we could probably use this for just a regular waterer, but it will not work for an electric waterer. So the last option we have was this um, little heating plate. And so I will be honest with you, this is probably your best case scenario. Um, Cause we were able to take our big five gallon waterers, stick them on here, and this kept the, the ice from forming pretty well. The problem with this is again, it's electric. Um, so, we needed to run electricity out there and it's just not easy to do that on our property but again it was nice to be able to just take our waterers put them on there you know we didn't have to switch them out or anything like that but this thing is also like 60 bucks and again electricity it's just a little bit of a pain and so that's why honestly like it may be a little bit more work in the morning to knock the ice out of a rubber bucket i think it ends up being less work overall or at least less frustrating in the long run and again, you don't have like electrical cords hanging out all across your property. It just, it ends up working better. Well, it works better for us. Um, definitely let us know in the comments down below what you use to keep ice out of your chicken water. I'm sure there's a million other ideas out there. Um, and I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, let us know. You can find us on Instagram at Old Running Farm. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. Remember to subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And as always, thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you next time.